Across Europe, there were many former politicians after the Second World War who were responsible for crimes against humanity, and they were executed after the war had come to an end. Many countries collaborated with the Nazis and the Germans. There was a huge amount of suffering in many occupied countries. Thousands of people were deported to concentration camps, and inside of Romania, the soldiers of the army were responsible for the persecution and slaughter of 260,000 people within their lands. Romania, in fact, was the third largest Axis army in Europe, only behind Germany and Italy, and one man who came to power in the country was Prime Minister Ion Antonescu. However, one man who shared the same surname with him was his Deputy Prime Minister, Mihai Antonescu, and at the end of the war he was shot by a firing squad, as he was considered a terrible war criminal. Join us today to look at the execution of Mihai Antonescu, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Mihai Antonescu as a young man, attended a university to study law, and he would, before he entered politics, become an attorney, and then he entered the government. But in 1940, he became the Minister of Foreign Affairs, to Prime Minister Ion Antonescu. Ion Antonescu fought the abdication of Carol II in favour of his 19-year-old son Michael, and he became the leader of the Iron Guard and the only legal political party in Romania. The party toughened the anti-Semitic persecution and legislation across the country, and they would join the Axis powers and would execute many politicians and officials who opposed them. Romania during the Second World War would be involved during Operation Barbarossa, and Hitler would reward Romania's loyalty with further lands and territory which had been captured. Romania would supply Nazi Germany and the Axis forces with oil, grain and industrial products, but Mihai Antonescu was to begin with not a huge supporter of the Iron Guard. He was in fact a member of the National Liberal Party, an opponent of them. But when he came to power as a minister, he went towards the far right, and he then became friends with many members of the Nazi Party, and he was considered one of the most trusted advisers. He would be favoured over other ministers, and Mihai was involved in censoring the criticism of the government, and creating anti-Semitic propaganda inside of the newspapers and the media. Quickly, Mihai Antonescu became the second most powerful man across Romania during the Second World War. But whilst the Prime Minister was focused on the Romanian army and their antics during the conflict, at home Mihai was in control of the country's matters inside Romania. He was not the happiest with the fact that the country was so closely allied and linked to the Nazis, as Jan Antonescu strengthened the country's ties with Hitler's regime following the early victories against the Soviets. But Mihai was running the interior ministry, and he created a number of laws that caused much suffering, and he would continue the persecution across the land. His laws resulted in thousands of Jews being forced out of their jobs, and they were also denied access to many careers, and they had lots of their property seized and taken. In 1941, he would approve pogroms, and he removed the government's protection of Romanian Jews, meaning that these men, women and children were now attacked by the Germans and the Nazis, and they would be rounded up and executed. So he was a man who removed the protection for thousands of people, and they would now be exposed to execution at the hands of the Einsatzgruppen. Mihai Antonescu even approved the slaughter of more people across Europe, and because of this, many people were transported to concentration camps. But throughout 1942, Jan Antonescu became alerted to the fact that things were not going right for the Germans during the war, and because of this he began to search for a way out of the war for Romania. He then tried to speak to Hitler and convince him to make peace with the Western Allies, and then he wanted the Nazis to focus their efforts on defeating the Soviet Union. However, when the Soviets defeated the Axis armies during the Battle of Stalingrad, the Prime Minister realised that the war was lost for the Axis, and to protect himself, he began to order his government to destroy incriminating files and documents that would tell the truth about Romania's involvement in the Holocaust and in the persecution of the Jews. Mihai Antonescu then began to be outspoken about the withdrawal of Romania from the war, and he would speak to the other minor allies of the Nazis to try and convince them to withdraw their support to try and break up large parts of the Axis alliance. Mihai also believed that Mussolini would be the one who could be powerful enough to stand up to Hitler and to force his hand into some sort of negotiation that would save their war effort. But under his plan it was hoped that the four countries, Romania, Hungary, Italy and Finland, would turn against the Nazis and other European nations would isolate the Germans. 
Mihai Antonescu, then as foreign minister, strengthened the alliance Romania had with Italy, and he visited Mussolini in June 1943, and he found out that Mussolini did agree to the plan. However, he would be hesitant to carry out the plan to isolate Hitler and the Nazis. But he then tried to ally his countries with the Americans and the British, and he tried to help relations Romania had with them. He also stopped the deportations of Romania's Jews, and allowed Jews to emigrate to countries not inside of the Axis nations, and he also repatriated others that were inside concentration camps. But in August 1944, the Soviets were really gathering pace, and they were getting closer towards Romania. King Michael then sacked the government of Ion Antonescu, and he declared that Romania surrendered. Because of this, Mihai Antonescu was arrested, and he would then be handed over to the new government, who placed him on trial. He was brought in front of a communist influence tribunal, and evidence was heard about Mihai's involvement in the persecution, in the suffering of thousands, and what his role was in government, which was so closely allied with Hitler. Because of this, he was found guilty of war crimes, was then condemned to death to die by a firing squad, alongside other prominent members of the Romanian government. He would die next to his former Prime Minister, Ion Antonescu. On the 1st of June 1946, he was led out of his prison to an execution site near to Yehava prison. A firing squad had been gathered to execute the former Prime Minister of Romania and his deputy, whom Mihai Antonescu was led out to face him. In a clearing, he was accompanied to his execution by four of the men who were dying that day, and Mihai Antonescu was the second most high-profile one to be executed. He was tied to a stake to ensure that he would not move, and images show him stood rather nonchalantly with his arms crossed and his palms clasped in his final moments. The charges and the confirmation of death were then read, before shortly after the firing squad were readied. They were told to aim, and then quickly they fired upon the men, including Antonescu, who was killed instantly. He refused to wear a blindfold facing his executioners, and when the salute was given, he was shot immediately. Mihai Antonescu was a deputy prime minister and foreign minister of Romania during the Second World War, and he was condemned to death as a war criminal. He would be involved in the persecutions of thousands, but as the war came to an end, he tried to cozy up to the Allies, to portray himself and his nation in a better light. He would try to lighten the persecution of people inside the country, but only because he had to, as he wanted to save his government's skin, and make them seem less dangerous than they were. But ultimately he was a man who followed the policies of his Prime Minister, and he was condemned to death for his brutality. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.